Hello everyone, my name is Mateo, and welcome back to another episode of Run 8. It has been a while, but we are back, because in Run 8, we got a brand new locomotive, and we are going to play with it today. Oh yes we are, and just look at this beauty. So, update number 13 has released for Run 8. Now, with update number 13, a brand new locomotive has arrived to Run 8. The MP15 pack number 1 is now available over on the Run 8 website, and with it, you get four locomotives. Well, actually, it comes with five locomotives. This one over here is a freebie with update number 13. If you're not sure whether or not you want to buy the pack, you get this one for free to try out. Now, with the pack, we get four locomotives. You get this uh, very nice-looking CSX model right here. I actually saw one of these about a year or so ago. Um, there was a CSX train going by, and it had one of these on it. Um, so that's pretty cool. And just to take note of some of the uh, visual differences that we have here, um, on the left, we have a BNSF uh, switcher. And you can notice that this one right here has ditch lights, whereas this one doesn't. Um... Trying to see if there's anything else. This one doesn't have a beacon. It has an air conditioner unit. This one does have a beacon, and it doesn't look like it has an air conditioner unit. And the horns are different as well. Look at how that one has, like, the single, and this one has three. Cool little visual differences here. Now, I am wondering... Let me just take control of this real quick. Apparently, I have control of another locomotive. Let me just take control of this real quick. And I'm wondering if the ditch lights actually work. Let's see. Oh no, look at that. They don't flash. Okay, that's good to know. Um, a, CSX, I think, is one of only a couple railroads in the U.S. that uses the flashing ditch lights. And normally they're activated when you honk the horn. But as you can see here, they don't actually do that. Which... So here is the back of the locomotive. Looks very nice. All right, well, let's take a step inside, shall we? Um, here's the interior of the locomotive. Wow, look at this. So, they have a brand new control stand. Um, as you can see, it's super rusty and everything. Really nicely detailed. Looks like we got a speedometer. What, what is that? Uh, amp. Excuse me. Oh, man. Excuse me. Amp gauge. Um, brake cylinders and stuff like that. We have a horn. And the horn switch is actually animated. Look at this. I don't think they were animated on the other locomotives. Well, no, no, no. The, uh, the, I think the SD70 had an animated horn switch, but I don't think any of the other ones did. Um, then obviously we have the brakes. Oh, look at this. You can actually turn that. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I don't know if that actually does anything, but that's pretty cool. Uh, for stalling. Ah, interesting. Road. I, it doesn't look like I can... Oh, I can turn this. Okay. Is, are these, like, different gears and stuff? I know some of these older locomotives had, like, gears and, like, you put it into, like, shunting mode and then they had, like, road mode and stuff like that. I'm probably saying that completely wrong. But it, it's something like that. And, of course, we have the uh, the radio here, which does work. Um, what is, uh, what is uh, Bakersfield? Star 54? So, um, let's see, actually. I wonder if I can turn on auto here. Yep. Woo. There we go, and then we can talk to Otto. Although, I don't want to talk to Otto. Here we go. Well, what do you know? Otto actually talks to me today. We're not going to talk to Otto, though. Um, so, yeah, here's the locomotive. Uh, it doesn't look like we have a dynamic brake. What is that? Hump? Hump control. Okay, so this is for the speed, I think. If I turn this on, slow speed control, zero, zero. Uh, oh, does that not do anything? This, is, this would actually be really nice for if you're doing manual humping. I hope everybody who's watching this knows what a hump is. Um, if you have no idea what humping trains means, um, go watch my Wes Colton video that I made about a year or two ago. Um, and you can see a hump yard in action. Um, but this is really, really nice. Because instead of having to like constantly control your speed this way, I think you can kind of just set this. And then it'll maintain the speed that you have set. Because you don't want to go that fast when you're... Um, you know, classifying a train. But anyways, that's, uh, that's the cab. What else do we got here? This looks like the air conditioner unit. Uh, ooh, I gotta remember how to, I gotta remember how to move around. Can we play with any of this? Nope, can't play with any of this. We can open up the door if we wanted to. Okay. 
What about the windows? Yep, we can open up the windows. The squeeze right here. Headlight control. Okay. Ah, so this right here are all of your engine controls and everything. Um, whoops. Oh, oh, okay. Nope, it's fine. What else do we got here? Um, display. This stuff is not clickable. Okay. Emergency fuel cutoff. That is clickable. That's not clickable. What are you? Nothing. Uh, okay. And then we have the isolation switch. Uh, you are a brake, I assume. Uh, oh, yep. Okay. Uh, does that work? I can't tell if that does anything. Okay. What are you? Are those flares? Fuses. Okay. All right. And then over here, we got some information about the locomotive. Some no job is so important. No service is so urgent that we cannot take time to perform our work safely. Nice. Look at that. And uh, let's see. Do we have windshield wipers? We do. Oh, wow. Uh, how would that actually clean in real life? Like, those look really nice because they're really big and everything. Well, like, these ones are so tiny. You'd have, like, this little space down here to see. And then the rest up here would just be, like, covered in water and stuff. It's surprising to me that these don't have windshield wipers. Huh. Interesting. 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 Well, looking behind the control stand, it looks like we have uh, some other stuff here. Reverser handle must be removed when unit is in trailing position. Okay. Danger high voltage. We got a phone back here. And then we have this as well for the fan, although we cannot play with it. It is, uh, as we would say in Microsoft Flight Sim terms, in-op. Have they uh, fixed the airplanes to not have any inoperative stuff? So there you have it. Very nice looking locomotive. That's CSXs. And of course, the next one on the list is our BNSF, which I've always liked this livery. There's something about it that's really nice. Kind of brings me back to the Microsoft train sim days. Um, I want to say they had a locomotive with this livery on it. It might have been the GP40, actually. Um, I always thought that looked really, really cool. Very nice detail. We got the bell. Um, that one's got the bell in the same spot. Although, look at this. I wonder if... CSX used these longer than BNSF did. I'm just taking note of some differences, right? The fact that this one has an air con, it has um, three horn, three horns, and then we have like a hump right here. And notice how this one just has the one, no air con, um, and and no hump right here. I don't know. It's 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 nice to see the variety. Oh, and look, this has like this. Whereas this one doesn't. Huh, interesting. Little tiny details. Alrighty, well here is the interior of the BNSF switcher. It's not all that different. Dif one major difference, we don't have the air conditioner up here. And something else I noticed is here it says BNSF. And on the CSX locomotive, it actually says CSX. Which um, is kind of a cool detail. We have a beacon switch. Does that work? No, I don't think that works. Uh, that's the bell. Yep, that's the bell. Oh, and we have wipers. Oh, look at this. This locomotive actually comes with a wiper switch. And it looks like we only have one setting. All right, yep, only one setting. There we go. Same little tiny wiper here. Yep. So, just a couple differences with the interior of this locomotive. On the back here, it's pretty much the same. Um, these switches are pretty much the same. And then, of course, we have a fan switch, which is just right here. Um, so very nice. And does that do anything? That does not do anything. Okay. Alrighty. Well, next on the list is the Union Pacific switcher. Um, this one has ditch lights. And uh, we can take notice of some of the visual differences with the ditch lights on this one. Notice that the ditch lights are kind of under the platform. Um, if you see, you know, the, the platform where, you know, somebody would stand. And we were to look at the CSX one, it's kind of above the platform, if you will, if that makes any sense. And just because I feel like testing it, this one does not have flashing ditch lights. Um, I don't think UP locomotives, at least the modern ones, have flashing ditch lights. I don't think they ever had flashing ditch lights. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, some more ditch lights on the back here, which uh, you can see the visual difference where they're located on the CSX uh, versus the UP locomotive. And this one's got the hump. It has one horn, a beacon, and no air conditioner. Okay, anyways, here is the interior of the UP uh, switcher. It says UP right here. And then I notice right here it says WAB. Um, all of them actually said that. Uh, let's see. There was something that I noticed, and I was going to bring it up, and I don't remember what it was anymore. <laughs> 
Well, it's not that much different. And you know, it's one thing I never brought up. We have all these switches here as well. Um, oh, look at this. Uh, I'm not sure what these two do. They don't do anything. We got this switch and then, of course, the generator and fuel switches and everything like that. That's one thing I didn't mention about the other one. It, it kind of just slipped my mind. But you know what? Look at this. This, this is really cool. And last but not least, the locomotive, which made the Amtrak guys on our Run 8 server super excited. We have an Amtrak switcher now. Look at that. Awesome. Let's take a look at some of the visuals. One thing I notice immediately is that the bell is located on the tip of the nose, whereas with all the other locomotives, they're located right next to the stack, uh, which is a very cool detail. This one does not have ditch lights at all, um, and it has a horn. Actually, it has two horns. Whereas the, the UP and the BNSF only have one, and the CSX has three. And this one also has this on top of the stacks, whereas these ones don't. Um, I don't really know what this would be called, but those two don't have it. This one also doesn't have a hump either. And also, I wanted to go to the rear of the locomotive, because there was a very minor detail that I had noticed. Um, with these three that I kind of overlooked. If you take a look at the back of the train, you have like these two, uh, what, what do you call it? Like caps of some sort, right? Take a look at how they're set up on all the locomotives. There's some visual differences here. Those ones are flat, flat. These ones are kind of at an angle. I don't know what they do, but that's just something that I noticed. Um, and this one doesn't have the little step right here, whereas that one does. The BNSF, I know, doesn't. The CSX does. Um, and it does not have a beacon, and it also doesn't have an air conditioner unit. Alrighty, and here is the interior of the Amtrak. Noticing immediately, it does not say Amtrak right there. Whereas the other three say the railroad, UP and stuff. This one does not say that. Um, it does say WAB. I'm not really too sure. WAB, CH something, CHG. Is that supposed to be for this? Is this 0215? I wonder if that's something. Because I feel like it would be channel 02 or something. I wonder if that's... Maybe, is that an A or is that a G? That looks like a G to me. Or... Okay, I don't know if that means anything, but I feel like that's an Easter egg for some reason. Alrighty, well, here's the interior of the locomotive. Um, obviously, it's not all that much different. Got the fan switches right here. Does that mean there's no fan switches here? Nope, we also have fan switches right here. I guess that's for the conductor. Um, but there we go. Oh, it also has cab lights. Oh, the cab lights actually work. Um, that one works. Oh, that one also works. They both work at the same time. So you can't have one on and the other one off. They're either on or they're off. And then, of course, we have the horn. You know, that horn that I have, it's one of the default ones. Um, let me see which one it is. It's the P3R401, which I believe is, it is a default one. And I got to say, I actually don't mind it. That's actually not a bad horn for this, uh, this train. Okay, and I am back. It is now Monday, April 1st. Started recording this on Friday, and then the weekend happened. It was my dad's 50th birthday, and also Easter, so hopefully everyone has had a great weekend. Um, we're here on the last locomotive, so we showcased those four locomotives. Those are the ones that you get in the pack, and this one is the freebie. If you don't have the pack, this is the locomotive you get to play with, um, which is fantastic, because we are using these on our Run 8 server. And here is the interior of the locomotive. Looks very good. Um, it doesn't say Run 8 here, but it does say Boom and Baby. <laughs> Hi, cat. Do you want to talk into the microphone as well? For some reason, my cat jumped up onto my lap. She's been doing that when I record videos. Oh, we have that. Couldn't even spell something six. I couldn't even spell engineer, and now I are one? What? All right, Kat, you are not doing anyone any favors. She's trying to pull down my microphone. Please don't do that. Six, what does this say? Six king something. I couldn't even spell engineer. And now I, 
I'm... Does that say I'm? I'm re one. I am. I m r e. I r one. Okay. Huh. I I don't know. That's that's quite interesting. Okay. All right. And it doesn't look like there's anything else around here. I'm trying to see if they have anything hidden because it would be the run eight devs to hide something. Like I'm like I said, it would be the run eight devs to add something hidden into the game. Like for example, have you guys met Brian yet? Um, Bri hello Brian, sup? How, how's it going? Have you have you guys met him yet? Jim, have you met Brian yet? Okay. With that said, let's play with the locomotive. We've got Union Pacific thirteen eleven here. We're here at Kern Oil and Petroleum along the Arvin branch. And the job for today is going to be pretty simple. We have the set of tankers just right here, which were serviced by the industry. And basically all we need to do is we need to take these tankers, put them into the storage yard, and then we need to pull this set right here out and put it into the service area. So, very simple job today. Now, as for the locomotive, we are using the switcher, obviously. We have one of the default horns, which, in my opinion, I think sounds fantastic. But we are using a custom bell from the Run It Enhancements Discord. That is this bell right here. And if you're curious, it's the P3R4 underscore zero one. That's the horn. And then the bell is the um, MEMD Fast Bell 2. We are running with default engine sounds today. Um, I know that somebody on the Run It Enhancements Discord has already posted a custom sound set for this locomotive. Um... So, if uh, you don't like the default sounds, there are some that are currently available. Let's just listen to it, shall we? Um, do this, do this, do this, just get all that running, and let's start the locomotive. And there you have it. I gotta say, the engine sounds for this one are actually pretty good. Um, let's get into the locomotive and see if we can get it moving. Um, this is the second time I'm recording this portion because I completely failed with driving this locomotive uh, because there's some really weird stuff in it. We got some speed controllers here, which I learned that the way that the speed controller works is, is um, you have to turn it off and then you can increase it with that, turn it back on, and you can see it's now 3.9. So you actually have to turn it off to change the speed. So I think if I hold it like this and then we turn it back on, it's still 3.9. So maybe 3.9 is the max. Okay, I don't know. Uh, okay, I, I don't know how it works, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get this locomotive moving. I'm gonna put this in reverse. Uh, that is out. Obvious, oh wait, what? We have passenger mode, and then we have freight mode. Okay, we're going to put in freight mode, right? I'm going to assume that this is an arrow pointing to freight, right? It wouldn't be the other way around, unless, like... No, no, it's obviously going to be this way. Okay. Uh, we got the reverser in there. Let's give some toots of the horn. And let's see if we can get this moving. Now, I was on road mode before, and I couldn't get the locomotive moving. So road mode is, like... I, I guess with a locomotive like this, there's, like, gears and stuff, right? And I'm going to assume that because this locomotive is for switching purposes, they put these gears in so that you can better control the speed of your locomotive. Um, okay, cat, don't walk on the table. That's not going to help anything. All right, well, we are not moving. And that's in road mode. Maybe I have to give this thing power. Like, if I put in three. We are obviously in reverse. Nope. I want to set it to that. Is there... Hold up. Let me... Hmm. You know what? Let's take a look at the manual real quick. Somebody on my Discord posted a manual for this locomotive. This might explain the gears a bit. Service selector switch. With the MP15, it is possible to control 
how the locomotive will behave when throttling up and loading the generator. This is done via the service selector switch in its four modes. Switching one, this is a normal position for yard switching. The load regulator is in maximum field position at the locomotive start. The generator excitation circuit is set up to provide fast loading. This position allows for more tractive effort at startup. Switching number two, so switching number one is this one right here and then switching number two. Uh, switching number two, locomotive operation in this position is the same as switching number one, except the engineer idles faster, resulting in even more generator amperage to the traction motors and faster acceleration, useful for when kicking cars. And then we have series, which I think series is this one here, series four stalling. Um, series, this is a position that prevents field shunting during slow speed, heavy drag service where undesirable cycling of shunting contractors might occur. Uh, example, to prevent cycling in and out of transition ref rap repeatedly. Uh, let's see, uh, blah, 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 blah. This position also sets up the generator excitation circuitry to provide smooth power application for softer starts as compared to switch one and switch two positions. And then you have road mode. This position is used during moderate and high speed road operations. Throttle and loading response is the same as during series operations. Only difference is that the series and road is that road operation. Field shunting is allowed to occur on traction motors to accommodate higher speeds. Got it. Um, okay, so that's the hump controller. I don't think I really care about that. Lights. Um, fantastic. Okay, so does that mean we just have to wait for this to move? Okay, cat, you're not going to walk on the table. I'm, or maybe you are, I don't know. So, see, we have that going. So that, that immediately reacted when I did this. Maybe the locomotive is just weird. Hmm. What if I was to throttle this thing really high? Oh, okay. We're now moving. I guess this locomotive is intended to run at very high throttle? Bear in mind, I am not a railroader in real life, so I have no idea, but we're, we're moving now in road mode, which is cool, at 4.7 miles an hour. Let's move it to notch eight, because why not, and see what that does for us. Okay. 10 miles an hour. Well, actually, we're at 9.7 miles an hour right now. Um, as I see on my rail driver, you can see that right there. Okay. Int wow. That locomotive, this locomotive came to a stop almost immediately. So how the heck are people going, like, really fast with this? Um, oh, I jumped the switch. That's okay. Uh, let's see. I need to flip this switch. Okay, then with that said, uh, let's try series mode maybe let's oops not switch one let's try series mode and see what that does okay brakes are off let's give two toots of the horn moving forward now put it in notch two locomotive will not start moving yet let's take it up to five five seem to get it moving okay and now we're moving at five miles an hour okay notch eight that feels so weird. Like, I feel like we shouldn't be doing this. 9.6 miles an hour is what we're making it to. That's according to my rail driver. Uh, interesting. Okay, cool. And then, if I idle this, immediately we stop, which feels so weird. Uh, how do I... Isn't there like a, um... Oh, what is it called? Like a clutch in this? I thought that there was a clutch in this locomotive. Some people were talking about that. It, let me move it to switch number one and let's see what that does. When I put it into switch number one, we started moving. Wow, look at how high that went. Look at how high those are, okay. And we're already moving at 1.2 miles an hour. Why don't we just notch eight this and see what happens? Okay, and we reach a maximum speed of 9.2 miles an hour. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed.
Uh... Alright, and let's try switch number two and let's see what that does. Do you reckon maybe we have to do this while we're moving? Okay, so that... Let's just notch eight and see what happens. What speed do we get to? Nine point one miles an hour. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. I don't know what I'm doing. We got our street coming up. fire is there a break on oh why is that out hello why are you out why why were you doing okay what why 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 game why 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 did the okay what is wrong with this okay hold on my conductor is clearly freaking out huh strange is that why I was failing to move at faster speeds? Let me see. I'm just going to notch this all the way up and let's see what happens. So, this, uh, switchers are weird. Okay, there we go. We're moving. Um, and let's just see how fast we get to. Maybe that's why I was stopping immediately. 9.5 miles an hour is the maximum on this. Yeah, oh, we still stop immediately. We still stop immediately. That's so weird. Uh, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. so, so this locomotive really is not intended for high-speed operations, it is, is my notice. That's, that's what I'm noticing with this. So you, you really wouldn't go very fast with this. Unless I'm doing something wrong. And if I'm doing something completely wrong... Uh, do please let me know. Bear in mind, I obviously have not used this locomotive before, so I have no idea what it is I'm doing. Yeah, see what I mean? It's like... Maybe the brakes are only there for when you have something behind you. Like, like maybe, maybe that's what it is? I don't know. We're about to see here. And now, why are the wheels screeching? Why the heck are the wheels screeching? My brakes are off. What? Why is it doing that? I don't understand. That's so weird. Look at this. I notch the locomotive up. And for some reason, the wheels are screeching, even though my brakes are off and everything. What are you doing? Why? Maybe there is something I'm doing wrong. Like, my brakes are off. This brake is off. What? Okay, well, Mateo's an idiot. Um, and here's why I'm an idiot. Most locomotives in this game... Actually, I think all locomotives in this game have a switch. They have... Well, not a switch, but like a, a light that illuminates. When you have the parking brake on... I don't know why the locomotive wasn't screeching earlier, but I clicked on it because I was going to look at the stats and see if there was an issue with the engine. And then that's when I realized it might be a good idea to release the handbrake. Okay, with that said, we're going to try something. Let's go back to road mode and let's just see what the max speed is now. Maybe there was something else going on. And look at that. Now we can move. Now we can move on notch two. Okay. I was gonna say, there we go. And now the, the max speed limit is 18. There we go. Look at how fast we're going now. That's so weird. Yep, and now it's like any other locomotive. Okay. 
So bear in mind, Mateo's an idiot. It's fine. We're, we're, we're fine. Don't worry about it. I mean, I guess I'm an idiot, but let's face it. I have a pretty bad track record. When it comes to driving locomotives, I have a pretty bad track record. Well, with that in mind, <laughs> because I'm an idiot, let's move it to switch number one, and let's just see how fast we really go. Let's see who really is behind this mess. And then that's when we, you know, take the hat off the guy, and it was, if it wasn't for you meddling kids, there we go, look at that, 11 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour, got it, okay. Okay, that's good to know. There we go. You know, I, I was really thinking about editing all of that stuff out about me being an idiot, but that's this is why we're learning the locomotive. Let, let's pretend nothing happened. BNSF, 8170, stop for a red signal. Let's not slam into the tanker now. That would probably be bad. There we go. See, and now we don't stop him. That was still a little rough. It's okay. All right. Let's get this thing hooked up there. We already got that. Uh, we're going to open that up. We're going to partially open that up. Is there PCS in this locomotive? Uh, I'm not seeing any indicators for PCS. Um, we have... Oh, it is. We have a PCS thing right here. Okay, so that's good to know. Um, I assume that it's to, to, to reset that would be the same as it is in any locomotive. And that's simply by putting the brake. That's simply by putting the brake into full um, application like that. Putting the reverser into neutral and then waiting about 30 seconds. And then that resets. Release the brake and you're good to go again. Um, all right, cool. And that is all filled up and ready to go. So let's open that up that that's all good now is there a timer in this locomotive um so that we can we set a timer on this i don't I, I don't assume we can do you know what let's let's see if maybe there is like a fake one or something um all right let's get this little constant moving Whoop. okay there we go uh oh mateo you should release the brake there we go <laughs> Release the parking brake, man. That's the one thing I'm not, I'm gonna... It's gonna mess me up in this locomotive. There we go. The locomotive is so easy to move when you know what you're doing. And you don't forget something like the handbrake. Let's just put the brake on here. There is not... Well, okay. That's loud. There's... Oh, okay. Let's bail the independent. There we go. And there we go. Whoop. Pink! Okay. <laughs> Let's flip this switch right here. And let's take this consist out. And it's going to be pretty easy. We're just going to shove it right into that empty storage track right there. Hank, watch out. Ooh. Okay, that wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a lot worse. All right, let's open that up. Let's partially open that up and see. Okay, filling up. Very good. And while I'm at it, because I know I'm going to forget, I'm going to take the handbrakes off all the cars. There we go. And look at this. For those that don't know, this industry is on a gradient. Um, and we're immediately rolling downhill. So that's not a great thing.
let's just push this back a little bit. And then I can take this, close that, open that up. Let's make sure that that's open. There we go. That way the car goes, in, or the train goes into emergency. Bang. There we go. And now, just to take this set right here and put it into the servicing area. And there so happens to be cars. So, now is the time to do some uphill switching. Which is why I absolutely hate this industry. It's why I hate working in Mojave, because Mojave is just uphill every single day. Uh, and it's, it's not fun, which... Ah. I don't think we have the power to move this. Well, no, we do, but for some reason... Okay, the brake is off now. Something tells me we don't have the power to move this. Oh, what is that? Hello? Okay. That's weird. There is a bug with the independent brake. I had the independent brake off just then, but it said it was full. That was weird. S something strange just happened then. And it appears we do, in fact, have the power to pull this. I guess run eight being run eight uh, just caused some minor issues. It's fine. All right, well, we're moving the stuff here very slowly. We're getting to the road crossing. We're maxing at, oh, actually, maybe I, maybe I should slow down. Anyways, that right there will do. Let's just stop. There we go. And right there will do. Let's, oh gosh, we're already going in reverse. Uh, let's see, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we should have eight for the second track. All right, perfect. So we will cut it right here and we will get the second set in. And for the nerds out there that are curious on the train stats, we have eight loaded cars right now. Um, and the horsepower per ton is 1.3. So not the world's most powerful locomotive in the world, obviously. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, it's got some juice. Maybe it's not in the power where this locomotive matters. I don't know. There we go. Flip this. And we shall get this last sudden. I bet I could probably just idle this train down the hill. Yeah, look at that gradient. Let's see. I'm going on notch two right now. Slowly getting speed here. Let me see. If I just idle this. We stay at a constant speed of seven miles an hour. Well, we're slowly speeding up. All right. And... We're stopping a little too soon, which is a very traditional Mateo move. It would be me to stop too soon. All right. And you know what? We can do this from first person. Oh. Okay. And... We're not slowing down, which is fantastic. Mateo messed it up. I was doing fine. You know what? Let's just pull this ahead a little bit. Let's go, train. Wow, look at that. Smoky little unit, that's for sure. Let's just pull this ahead a little bit so that all the cars are in the service area. And we don't have anything sticking out. There we go. Whoop. Perfect. And real quick, before it starts to roll away on us, except it already did. Except it already did. All right, let's just leave this right here, open that up, and let's go. Um, I already have it in forwards. Whoop. There we go. All right, and there you have it. There is the switcher. Very nice little locomotive to do some switching with. It's kind of weird. I well, with that said, there you have it. And there you have it. That is the MP15 switcher pack. So, I guess I will do a very quick channel update. I know I haven't been doing a lot of YouTube content, and I do apologize about it. I keep saying it's motivational issues, which I still think it's kind of motivational problems. 
Um, let's put it into let's just put it this way, right? My channel just turned ten years old, which is amazing. It's it's kind of crazy, I, especially being as young as I am to say that something I've been doing, you know, to say that I've been doing something for ten years, which is kind of crazy. With that said, it obviously means that I started this channel when I was very young. Obviously, in 10 years, your interests and stuff like that can change. And to put it into perspective, let's just put it this way, right? Making content like this requires you to be on a computer a lot. There's a reason why I choose to work on farms and not in an office building. Let's just put it that way. So take that as you will. I think something else that's a contributor is the fact that there really hasn't been a game or very many games that have really taken my interest. And, uh, you know, I, I, I do run eight and I, I've played Railroader and I think trains have kind of worn me out. And so with train games kind of wearing me out and not really having much else to record, it kind of just leaves me with writer's block almost. You know what I mean? Um, if you can have writer's block on YouTube, this is basically what it is. And I'm kind of just in that period right now. And it bothers me when I take this break. Like, you know, I, I, I haven't uploaded in three months, and it bothers me. It, it really does bother me. Um, because I, I guess I feel like something will happen. Actually, now that we're talking about that, I, me saying that I feel something will happen if I don't upload in an extended period of time. There was a video that I just came across from a YouTuber called Paul Soros Jr. Some of you have probably heard of him. I used to watch him when I was younger. Um, Paul Soros Jr., he took a break, a nine-month break, and he just recently came back on YouTube. And this is one of those moments where life is a lot simpler if you don't overthink things. I'm somebody who overthinks everything. And uh, as I was watching his video, his first video where he came back and stuff like that, it's one of those things where it's like, nothing's going to happen, Mateo. It, it, it's fine. Take your break and stop worrying so much. Because I think what ends up happening, happening is I start worrying about what happens when I do return. And then I don't return. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, oh, something bad's going to happen if I return right now. Some, you know what I mean? So then I don't return. And it, I, it's, I don't know. It, it's Mateo just overthinking things so much. And I think that that's another contributor to me not having motivation not having games to play that really take my interest and all that good stuff. Don't worry, I'm not going to go away forever. One game I might come back with that actually might make me come back to YouTube is Supermarket Simulator. I've been playing that over on Twitch recently, and it's kind of fun. Um, so we'll see. With that said, I am streaming over on Twitch every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays we are playing Starbound. Thursdays, I'm playing Project Zomboid, all at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I do a couple solo streams throughout the week. So do stay tuned for that. Also, on April 15th, uh, actually April 14th, that is a Sunday, our Run 8 SoCal server turns two years old. So if you would like to join our Run 8 multiplayer server, uh, join the Discord. The link is down in the description below, and uh, you can have fun with us. All you have to do to join the server is join the Discord, pass a check ride, and you can have fun with us. So with that said, don't worry. I'm not going away forever. I I have projects for Run 8 that I've talked about a lot on the back burner. For example, um, Run 8 Story Mode, which is something I talked about two years ago. Well, actually, I think it was a year. It wasn't, that wasn't that long ago. It was probably half a year ago that I talked about it. And then Run 8 Economy Mode which uh, there are two things that I've kind of had on the back burner. Uh, and I think what it is is I don't want to start something and then not continue it c uh, consistently. So that's why I haven't done them yet. I, I think I'm going to plan some things after this video. Maybe start uploading like one or two videos a week and try and get myself back on a schedule. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes, because I, I really don't want to leave this. Just having writer's block, that is all. But with that said, if you have any games that you would like to see, leave a comment down below, and maybe I'll take a look and, and play them. And, and maybe it could be a lot of fun. With that said, I'm just going to keep rambling on. This has been Run 8, the MP15 pack. The second anniversary of launching our Run 8 server is on April 14th. Join the Discord. I'm probably going to stream this over here on YouTube, so do stay tuned for that. And uh, with that said, 
Um, I'll see everyone when I see you. If you would, yeah, actually, you know what? I was going to bring this up. If you guys would like to see some farming content, because obviously I mentioned when I started talking, if you guys would like to see some farming stuff, let me know. And uh, maybe I can try and record some of the stuff that we do. Um, I post a lot of it on Discord. So I, I wouldn't do any, like, life vlogging stuff. That's just not really my thing. Walking around and talking to a camera, that's just not really my thing. Obviously, there's a reason why I don't use my webcam on Twitch anymore. Um, that's just not, nah, that doesn't really interest me that much. But if you'd like to see it, let me know, and maybe I can record some stuff. I don't know. But yeah, with that said, uh, I'll be around. Thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Later. Peace.